Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to this part 10 of a many part series called The Journey. Today, we're on chapter 10 of the book Patriarchs and Prophets, the first of five main core books written by Ellen White. And chapter 10 is titled The Tower of Babel. As I've been reminding through these sessions, the study of the Bible is primary, is the most important thing. And this just helps substantiate or helps better explain what we find in the Bible. So I completely encourage you to study these two together. As we will do today, we will open the Bible because this chapter starts talking about parenting. And it is hard to understand what's going on in the book if you are not studying the Bible simultaneously. So we have our Bibles open in Genesis chapter 9 verse 18 and on and this is talking about Noah's son after the flood after they got out of the ark <clears throat> and it says uh, starting on verse 18 Noah no sorry now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham and Hafet and then later says and Noah began to be a farmer and he planted a vineyard then he drank the wine and was drunk and he became uncovered in his tent, meaning he was naked in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Hafed took a garment laid on, laid on both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Ham saw his father naked, and instead of covering him, he felt it was funny or amusing or interesting for his brotherhood, his brothers to know that the father was naked. And this is important because, of course, in this chapter, in chapter 10, it began talking about that incident. And it says, yet in the three sons of Noah was speedily developed the same great distinction see in the world before the flood. In Chem, Ham, and Hafed, who were to be the founders of the human race, was foreshadowed the character of their posterity. And of course, if we read the Bible, we continue, we see that Noah, when he woke up and he realized what Ham had done, he casted a curse, um, of course, verbally speaking, but Uh, casted a curse on his son Ham for what he had done. And this is important because as as the history of the Bible unfolds, seemingly uh, unimportant, wicked acts by people, sometimes God, you know, punishes these people, but we might be left with the uh, vision, we might be left with the, what to, what word to use here, with the idea that maybe God is too harsh. But in that seemingly wicked act of Ham, of not covering his father nakedness, of seeing it and go telling his brothers, from him, a generation of wicked, very wicked people, you know, descended. So what started as a very small sin through the generations, he just spread it and spread it and spread it and propagated until sin again was out of control. So in this chapter, the Tower of Babel, we see that from the descendants of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Hafed, Ham was wicked. And through his descendants, horribleness of sin entered the world again. So what happened before the flood happened yet again after the flood. People that through that Shem, uh, Ham, that you know, be, saw the flood and was a witness to it, and and saw the power of God and and His, uh, you know, redemption to them and liberation from the destruction. He didn't pass that message down very well. His sons began to you know doubt and 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 cast God outside, and soon enough, we were back right to pre-flood conditions. Sin was abundantly. <clears throat> so, it says here, talking about the parenting, 
As a rule, children inherit the dispositions and tendencies of their parents and imitate their example so that the sins of the parents are practiced by the children from generation to generation. And again, he's talking about Ham here. What started small became big and bigger and bigger. And that is a witness to what we see today. Bad parenting leads to even worse sons, and then those sons become even worse parents, and it just spreads out and out. And now we are in a society filled with entitled people, uh, you know, filled with wicked practices and wicked ways. So sinners destroy, uh, one sinner destroys much good. That's what it says in Ecclesiastes 9.18. Now, as the story continues, uh, the descendants of Ham, of course, they, you know, they started practicing evil things that were not within the boundaries of what God had asked them to do. So they wanted to go a separate way. They decided, you know what, we're not going to spend time with the God worshipers. We want our own thing. We don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, told by them that we're doing it wrong. So they left and they settled in the plain of Chinar by the banks of the river Euphrates. Obviously, where there's water, the land is very nourishing and very rich. So they settled there. And here's the thing about these people. Having heard that God promised not to destroy the world again by water, they completely disbelieved God. And God had also told them you know, spread out. Don't don't stay in one place. Spread out and populate the earth. And they did the exact opposite. They decided to stay in the same center, in the same city, create a city there, and in the center of that city, make the tower, what, what we call the Tower of Babel. Make a tower that was so, so high that if, if, you know, the earth was to be destroyed again by water, they could just climb up the tower and stay safe there, as if they could escape the judgments of God. So they were basically defiant to God and his promise that he would not destroy the earth again by water. Of course, when this happened, you, you can, I mean, we see this today in, in major cities where, where, you know, just, evilness abounds and that happened there and these were people that had no interest in God so evilness just continued to spread the sins were worse and worse and worse even the concept of uh, sacrifices that God meant to point up to Jesus when he was to be sacrificed for the world even that was you know horribly twisted and people started sacrificing children. They started seeing their gods because clearly it was not the God of the Bible. Their image of God was one that God had wrath and God needed to be appeased and they were killing their children in the name of this God that is not the God of the Bible. So even something as beautiful as the sacrifice that God is going to make for the world was completely like twisted and turgiversed and now uh, it was actually a very, very wicked thing to do, of killing your own kids in the name of a God. Again, not the God of the Bible. So God again had to intervene. But this time he had promised he would not destroy the world by water. So what he did, he the tower was so, so high that it got to the point that people could not just walk and get materials and go build they had to rely on passing messages down from the levels of the tower so that they could, you know, hey, can you bring me a hammer or like send me more bricks? And then people, that message gets passed along and people send bricks back up. Clearly, communication was key. So what did God did? God confused their tongues. God, for the first time, created language you know, or distinct languages. He, he he confused the tongues. He gave everyone a different, not everyone, but, you know, certain group of people spoke different tongues and they could not understand each other anymore. So they had no choice but to stop the what they thought it was going to be the, the center of the city actually got used to become the, the start of populating the earth because people had to spread out and, you know, they found the people that spoke their own tongues uh, their own languages and spread out and actually uh, got, got them to, you know, diverse, to spread in the world. 
through uh, confusing their tongues. So <clears throat> God did this because those who did fear the Lord in these times, you know, ask them. He says, in mercy to the world, he defeated the purpose of the tower builders and over <clears throat> in mercy to the world. Sorry, there's a comma there. In mercy to the world, he defeated the purpose of the tower builders and overthrew the memorial of their daring. In mercy, he confounded their speech, thus putting a check on their purposes of rebellion. God bears long with the perversity of men, giving them ample opportunity for repentance, but he marks all their devices to resist the authority of his just and holy law. Very important. That last part there, God gives plenty of opportunity for repentance. And again, as you can imagine, Noah lived north of 300 years after he came out of the ark. Uh, uh, Shem lived, I, I think it was 500 years after. So these were God seeking people. These were people that were living, were the fathers of those, you know, gen were the fathers of those generations. So surely they had them to speak to the judgment of God and to the mercy of God over and over. But the people just rejected this truth. Hence, the Tower of Babel. So, just and Ellen White makes the connection again towards what's going to happen at the end of the world. And once again, we're not building, and we are, I'm talking as a society, today we're not building literal towers, but we are trying to build our own version of heaven here on earth. It says, many seek to make a heaven for themselves by obtaining riches and power. We see this absolutely every day. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully, trampling upon human rights and disregarding divine authority. The proud may be for a time in great power and may see success in all that they undertake, but in the end they will find only disappointment and wretchedness. The time of God's investigation is at hand. The Most High will come down to see that which the children of men have built. His sovereign power will be revealed. The works of human pride will be laid low. And I remind you here, and th that's basically the end of the chapter. That's what the chapter talks about. But I remind you of that verse that says, Do not build treasures here on earth. Build treasures on heaven when moth and destroy instrument is not a thing. So, my friend, I encourage you to build treasures in heaven. I encourage you to not be deceived by the seemingly apparent time of peace and prosperity that people claim we're having here. Things will get ugly. God's judgments are coming and God himself is coming to get his people. Are you one of them? Until next one.